how are you doing? Uh, Binary Jazz Podcast. Uh, my friends, Chris, Allison, I'm Gary. We do this every uh, week-ish. We've been doing it for four or five seasons, somewhere between one and three episodes. Um, and uh, that's it. The way it works, Allison brings the topic. Chris and I pretend like we know what's going on, not just about the topic, but life in general. Um, and uh, the topic is uh, really just a way to exhibit how little we actually know what's going on. Uh, proudly. If ignorance is bliss, I am blissful. We've I don't know, getting... us. That's where you can find out more. We've been getting a lot of Russian spam. We don't have like a cohesive marketing plan or team or <laughs> like voice or whatever you need to have. So these intros always feel like we don't a have a cohesive haphazard. marketing plan. We don't have a marketing plan. <laughs> well, that makes it pretty <laughs> incohesive, I guess, is the lack of existence, number one. Uh, number two would be, uh, uh, this might be the first time we've uttered the word marketing uh, I definitely, amongst each other. I mean, yeah. unless unless we were talking about it like ironically. We were besmirching it, yeah. Yeah. So this would be the first time we have smirched marketing. Yeah. That's it. That's that's how we are here and uh, continue to be so. I, I, I will say recently during our conversation about whether this is season four or five, um, the uh, the topic came up uh, and Alison pointed out what different people we are now than we were back then. Mm. Uh, and that was, you know. I, I appreciated that. It got me thinking quite a bit. Uh, we are all very different people than we were back then. I think we're better. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, I guess I didn't lean into that part. Um, yes, yes. I think I think that on the uh, the door frame of life are are a little bit taller than we once were. I that's certainly make language. more money than I did when we first. <laughs> well, that's good. If if there's nothing else that this podcast has brought. That right yeah. there. It's all from the podcast. It's Surprise! definitely it's no. definitely revenue from the plug podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't been splitting it three ways. I've just yeah. been <laughs> yeah, that's fine. hoarding it all. <laughs> um, my, my payment is being able to step away from like forcing myself to step away from work for a minute and uh, think like a human being. Uh, I do wake up on Mondays now. We record on Mondays. Uh, I wake up on Mondays and think like I'm excited. That's on the calendar today. I, I mean, I happen on Fridays, too, but it's a cool way to start the week. But you like being excited about a Friday is like par for the course. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to stop looking at our spam folder. We've been getting a lot of uh, Russian spam. Uh, you need to write off spam. You don't need to read spam. That's why it's spam. I know. Well, but sometimes it's entertaining. <laughs> but it's uh, not if it's in Russian. Then it's just no, like, it's yeah, not. They're but they're scraping then, the feed and finding out re- at the end we're reading it, which is why they keep sending more. So what's interesting? Yeah, what's we're interesting about it. um. What's interesting about the Russian spam is every once in a while it'll be it'll there'll be there'll be s- sections of English, and mm. the English things like there's like a bunch of Cyrillic Cyrillic characters and then something in English and like the juxtaposition by itself is is jarring, but also sometimes the things that it was that it says in English are also jarring. Like I was just looking at one that was like, oh well, let me go back to it. Uh, oh, I guess we're doing a section early today. Yeah, segment. It's called a segment. Um, yeah. Just make the fats this. make the fats really skinny to inject similar to click a dermal filler. I gotta a, start tending, uh, a extensively meetings. used surgical process to increase kind of the stuff. length of penis. Out of left field. <laughs> don't like any of this. I don't like any of, those <laughs> like any of those words in that combo. <laughs> and then we have several uh, several emails from Eric Jones who wants who's betting we'd like our website binary jazz to dot us to generate more leads, which is not actually true, Eric. I would prefer to generate less leads from people yeah. named Eric. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you like that, Eric? He seems to have found it just fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There's no problem but here. With the fact that we know who you are, I think it's working okay. To circle back what you were saying, Gary, I um, oh. at some point in my professional career, someone told me that I would that to give up on making friends at work, which is not good advice, um, or I don't think it's good advice because I don't think you have to be best friends with everyone at work but I think there are going to be some like some gems 
in every sure. workplace that you would just yes. be friends with normally. I totally um, agree. Yeah. Anyway. And that's you I too. Will... You're my gem. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't work together anymore. And no, we probably no, only work like, together it's... concurrently for like maybe the span of like two months or something. Months. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was, uh, yeah, it was not very long after I started there, Chris, that you left. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think you, you probably started, I was, you started at like the beginning of the summer and I left at the end of the summer. Yeah. I think my <laughs> tenure was like 367 days there. So it's not as though I had a, yeah, right. Extensive career with which to overlap. But, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think that uh, you're right. Like, as we think about like, uh, like don't make friends at work like that seems like bad advice. Like if you meet someone that is like you are automatically friends with, like it kind of doesn't matter where you met. Like if it's work, well, that makes sense because you're there a lot of time. But, you know. I also think if you go through, if you enter into a situation being like, it's like, it's like the reality show, like I'm not here to make friends. Mm. Then I, I feel miserable. like your aura is not going to be very friendly. Like no one's going to want to ask you questions. Oh, or... mm-hmm. oh, this is actually useful advice. Thank you. As I, yeah, that's, that's like... what I'm here for. Useful yeah. advice. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And that's, yeah. And that's next... the subtitle of, of the podcast, Binary Jazz. Useful advice. Useful ad- yeah. yeah. As I approach my next gig, I will make sure that uh, I will I come in uh, really crispy, prevent friendships from forming. I want that to happen. I crispy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, to that end, I will say that I uh, I have run into some gems of, as well, in, including both of you, clearly. Uh, and then I just recently um, bumped into um, Zach, our old buddy from the same place we were oh, at. Yeah. yeah, we had a hangout, and he's and in like physically. No, not physically. Oh, I, I was just like, like I don't do person? that. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not how friends work. Friends are yeah. on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you prevent friendships is that when you're done with it, you just close the thing. And it's just, you're it. done. <laughs> We're done. It's like, it's like a, it's a markup tag. Friendship starts, friendship ends, meeting over. It's. <laughs> Oh boy, this sounds a lot like um, a fight club, like single serving friendships or whatever. I'll also I'll also uh, tell y'all another mm-hmm. update. I so I updated things. I was talking before the show. I updated the podcast so that we're now uh, epi- episodes in your podcast player will iterate numerically as opposed to binarically. Well, to be fair, binary is still is still num- numerically yes, but it'll yeah. in, in like the normal. We're going to count Roman, base 10, like normal humans. Base 10, normal humans, yeah. yeah. Um, instead of base 2. But the other thing that I did, is I, I got... I got Join us, um, normal humans. Yeah, I got a new uh, hard drive because I was yeah, using... Congrats. Well, like external hard drive. Oh. Um, because I had one that, that like had all my stuff from my old laptop and had a, like a mix of like personal and work stuff. And I wanted mm-hmm. some of that stuff for like my personal laptop and some of it to be the work stuff. So I was like, okay, well, I'll get a new lap. I'll get a new hard drive and I'll, it'll be the work thing and I'll transfer all the stuff that's non-work into the non-work one and everything will be great. Um, so one of the things that I, that like failed to register in my brain uh, was the fact that this show is mm-hmm. always recorded on my work laptop. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. I transferred all the stuff to my personal drive and then deleted it. Ooh, fun. <laughs> so I didn't have all the history, which has like the crazy, like the dumb intro, uh, the not very uh, professionally built intro in the YouTube. Uh, and it also didn't have the source files of other things. So I recorded. Um, I did get some of that stuff, but others I, I did not. So I made a new intro video uh, on YouTube, which you can see. Uh, it's it's a little I bit. Love that we're like we're like oh cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit less uh, chaotic, and, I would say. A little bit. And you maybe. cleared this with the marketing team. Yeah, I definitely okay. cleared it with the marketing team. And Great. then I added in in the outro. Um, I added 
uh, we weren't actually, um, we've been giving credit to uh, Serpiente Negro Ensemble uh, in our podcast notes uh, as mm-hmm. like a footer to everything. Um, I actually recorded a an audio credit to them, uh, thanking them for their intro and outro music uh, so that they get credit in the podcast as well without going into the notes. So again. Did you I, ask people to like and subscribe? No, no. Okay. All right. And I'm not I'm going sure that'll, to. That'll come up in the next marketing meeting. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, you do get, if you if you are on YouTube and you and you watch it to the end, you do get a little, like, you know, bad, like, there's stupid hover cards that, um, you know, for the podcast channel yeah. or the channel and for the whatever, a recent episode, I think. So you could, if you desired, like and subscribe, but I do not actually yeah. ask you to like and subscribe. That's good. I wasn't going to do it anyway. Although I think that maybe they already have liked or subscribed. Or... Is that the same thing? Is that two different things? It's two different things. Two separate things. Yeah. You I'm can also, sure yeah, there's right. also, you, you can also either. ring the bell, uh, which is you click on the bell icon so that you get no. Notif- so it's different than subscriptions because subscriptions, you just, you just see in your feed when there's new things by a channel. But if you yep. ring the bell, then you actually get a notification of when a new uh, episode is is published. Um, Have you all um, watched the movie Mitchells versus Machines on Netflix? No. Okay. Um, I highly recommend it, number one. Uh, it's a very enjoyable, uh, inclusive, like family movie. Um, more inclusive, I should say. Um, but secondarily, uh, the father has um, trouble like using social, well, computers in general, but social media. And he refers to YouTube as YubTub, um, which I I love. And is also, if you type that in, it takes you to YouTube. So I'm not sure which came first. I'm not cool enough to know, but um, it's it's a it, it's a very enjoyable movie. You should watch it. Yub and I relate to the father. Tub. Mm-hmm. Boy, I hope that works right now, and you don't get in trouble on your work computer. <laughs> nope. Y U B T U B. Hold on, let me confirm it. Katie, is that what he calls it? He calls it Yub Tub. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm pretty sure I typed that in the other day. Maybe the I typed experts, it on my the phone. The experts have chimed in. That is what it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think that's what I typed. I must not have typed that in the other day because. Yeah. No. Yep. No, I just typed <laughs> that in now, and it actually took us over to uh, Eric Eric's website, the lead guy. <laughs> So, Eric, congrats. Head over to Eric's website, yes. yubtub.com. Eric, what was it? You've been punk. Uh, Eric Jones, I think. Eric Jones with a K. E R I C K J O N E S. Yeah. This K is silent. <laughs> and you don't spell it either. It Eric Coney's. <laughs> Not as mature as I used to be. Hey. When, when are who? Mom and Ty? Yeah. You see you want to see some of my friends? Yeah. Say hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Say hello to the internet. Yeah. Um they they Hi. will be oh, okay, see ya. I'm just gonna do it at this height. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so much better. The answer in case you're wondering is they will be back in about fifteen minutes or so. Ten minutes or so. Oh, well, that's good, to to that's good information since we were not the ones that actually asked that question. I know, the person who did ask the question ran away. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I get that a lot. Um, it's it's Lunar New Year tomorrow. Yes. Uh, so uh, we are celebrating uh, in a uh, traditional sense, traditional Chinese sense. We're going to do um, dumplings and noodles and whatnot. That sounds good. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Be fun. So that mandated tomorrow. that um, somebody go out and Acquire the get the supplies. Need, yeah, yeah, yep. Um, I do have a topic. Excellent. <laughs> sorry, got a little off topic sorry. before we even got to the topic. Um, the topic is psycho pump. Psycho pump. 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 Okay. Um, this is totally a genre of music that we have generated. <laughs> I, I'm like 100. That would serious. be that would be psycho punk. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it was. I saw psycho pump as well. Right? You remember that? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I don't think we have pomp as a suffix in the genre nader. I'm open to the pull request. Yeah, I mean, we could. It wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't be a bad thing to add? I, I know that we definitely have psycho as a prefix. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, because, we certainly do. Yeah, because yeah. there's Psycho Billy and other things that are derivatives of that. Uh, Psycho Pump. I stand by my answer. So I, I liked Psycho Pump, first of all, <laughs> which is a a tube, a a a magical tube that you attached to your head that mm-hmm. sucks out your intellect. It's a Psycho Punk, a Psycho Pump. <laughs> It's like, oh, something happened to the water pump. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Psycho Pump uh, is when you're over enthusiastically uh, demonstrating, uh, e- exhibiting like very uh, exuberant, uh, like glam, glamorous lifestyle choices oh what a psychopomp <laughs> yeah what a psychopomp that's that's a psychopomp that's, yeah he's such a psychopomp yeah it um it's uh it's like you know like when you talk about like local city halls and there's like different like there's like the there's the mayor and then there's like a representative there's like a middle layer between representative and um, district representative, cycle pump. And you can tell by the, uh, the board thing on the shoulders. It's two stripes. The, board, the I see a number of stripes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. Yeah. I like both these answers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like it as an achievable rank of some sort, but not a military rank, you know, like, I, I feel like I should aspire for that in my job. You should people. aspire to be a psycho pump. Yes. I don't know that you should, though. I guess it depends on the definition. <laughs> only, only time will tell whether it's something that's desirable or not. I mean, there's, yeah. there's like, you know, pompous and pomp and circumstance. It's like something yeah. that's very, like, over the top. And, and the psycho uh, prefix just makes it more so. Agreed. Just makes it, like, over the top to a uh, tremendous extent. Um, would you, I mean, could you prefix many things that way? Sure. So like, instead of supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, you could be like psychocalifragilisticexpialidocious. Yeah, that would be, yeah. that would be intense if it was psychocalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, like would a super Walmart, I have super Walmart, actually the psycho Walmart makes a lot more. Psycho sense. Walmart. Yeah, for sure. Like, wait, is there such seems... a thing as a super Walmart? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I believe it's, so. It's using a definition of super that not a lot of people ascribe to, but yeah, it exists. Right. Yeah. 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 I think they should call it excess Walmart instead of super. <laughs> Excessive Walmart. Oh, great. It has groceries too. Yeah. Is there a super Kmart? Yeah. There are only super eight K. Kmarts left in the world. Well, there was. Yeah, there I used guess. to be. Yeah. Huh. I, I ran into an article on that. Where did I run into that article this morning? At the height, they were like 2,800 stores or something. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You can whisper something in my ear, sure. Um, but now there are like eight left because it's bankrupt. And I guess somebody owned the brand or something for the last eight. Yeah, they must have They must have gotten killed by, uh, by Walmart because it's the same sort of demographic and yeah. same sort of thing that they're... Secrets. Yeah, there are secrets. Uh, I want to know the secrets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm like I'm basically the holder of the secret for the episode, but I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a uh, so. Uh, there's a thing, um, oftentimes in Dungeons and Dragons, if one particular character comes uh, comes by information that the others do not there are various ways of of doing that and one way of doing that is just sort of whisper into their ear and then everybody else is like oh they know a secret because it's a big deal well you could pass notes or text them or whatever too but that's yeah. the easiest i like whispering that I yeah like whispering. that's the vibe that i'm after yeah yeah and it's it's sort of so it's a big deal on on, on like critical role if if matt ha- goes over to to one of the players and whispers into their ear and everybody's like oh there's secrets whispers <laughs> whispers i i was trying to find the kmart article to get some accurate numbers 
I'll have to check. I don't know if it was even on this device. It might have been on another device where I read it. So I'll have to. Just let it go by the way, son. Yeah. yeah. I can't now. We need to put, we need to link this in the show notes. People need to know. People need to know how many uh, Kmarts there are. To Eric K. Jones's site, yubtub.com. They can find out what's <laughs> happening with Kmart. <laughs> that's why it's, that's why he's the one that has the license. Yeah. He, it's the K. Jones. It's all adding up. Kmart. That makes sense. Yeah. It's Eric K. Jones's Kmart. And he called it super because he was like trying to convince people, even though the other 2,800 and some other locations that closed. It was still- right. You said yeah. that wrong. It was Yup Tub. It was Yup Tub. Thank you. You said that. Okay. <laughs> my, my favorite guest star of the podcast by far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry I don't about. think you did. <laughs> um, honestly, um, it's, we're all just living in her, her reality. Yeah. <laughs> At least around here. So last week, uh, those of you, uh, well, yeah, yeah, this will come out in the same week. Last week, uh, the the new version of WordPress came out, which yep. matters to like maybe five of our listeners. Actually, it matters to the three of our listeners, the three of us that are in here. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, I uh, I was on a podcast. Uh, talking about it, uh, well, is it a podcast? Does not. I don't know if it's audio. It's a podcast. It's a video. I guess so. I think it's, it it's a podcast that's that is uh, made available on YouTube only. I think the technical definition of podcast these days is if you can play it on an Apple device, it counts. So it's pretty sure. broad. Yeah, but it was very. Remember they tried to trademark it. What's that? Remember when Apple tried to trademark podcast? Yes. A bunch of doofuses. Yeah. Rich, um, rich and doofuses. then, and then following that, like the day after, yep. uh, was a blog, uh, a blog post that I wrote, I was published on also the new WordPress update. And I will so, say, setting aside my humor for a moment, I will say, uh, both of those I feel are significantly influential publications in the industry. So sincere congrats. Like, like, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a day that I, I had to pay a lot more attention to my social medias. <sighs> <laughs> but also uh, on top of that super informative in that i was looking for a lot of information that was covered in said blog post excellent which was, which was great because i was just like i'm looking for a one-stop shop to answer all my questions yep um and so that was very handy for me because excellent i had, I had people uh asking me <laughs> and i was like i don't know yet yeah and i also um like I don't know, the day after or something there is, or I guess it wasn't the day after. Somewhere in there, there was somebody um, asked on Quora and like, I get like requests to answer WordPressy questions because I've answered WordPressy questions in the past. And I guess they see my name pop up um, and about basically what I wrote about, which was like, can you, no, it was something like, do you have to use a child theme uh, of 2022? And I was like, no, you don't have to, but you can. And I wrote about it and I did a thing about it. And there it is over there. Go do that stuff. Um, uh, and I don't always answer things that people ask me to answer, but sometimes if it like crosses Your my track radar. Your record on this show has been great. <laughs> it's true. Um, I'm really, I, I will actually say this is the first release where I've, I've had, um, like any kind of reaction to um, any kind of reaction. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe four, was it four, six or four, seven when the rest API was merged? Yeah. Something like that. Um, I don't know. Wow. Glad that I had that at hand. Uh, <laughs> but, but in this case, um, I, I knew more people that were working on the release, uh, which was cool. Mm. Um, but, but also I'm less excited about the direction WordPress is headed um, as a developer, but like as a, as a site user, like, like if I can find blocks and stuff that do what I want, like, it's great. It's awesome. It's like, this is the experience that it should be, but as a developer, I'm like, I don't want to write this. Um, so <laughs> like, I kind of see my, my, um, uh, I, I kind of see my next path, like career wise, like to be away from WordPress. I want to, I want to just write like really deep, you know, crazy PHP. So that's yeah, fine. that was, that was definitely uh, something that was, notable 
that I found looking at the new uh, the new block theme um, was the the lack of PHP and really any language at all um, because it like Gutenberg is not a language. It's like, it's, I don't know, a shorthand, I guess. And, and it's, it's like really like, like deep, deep into, into that. Uh, even, even with the, the files that are PHP, it's just, it's all like Gutenberg tags, um, mm -hmm. which is fine. And it's good. And it's, I think it, I think for, for, uh, like I said, um, in both of those mediums, um, I think it's really good for uh, new developers who don't have any sort of experience with theme development or WordPress or anything else to be able to jump in and be like, hey, I can do this sort of stuff. Um, I, and I it's mean, good for users because it's, it's like, here's a bunch of stuff that you could use or not at all. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 a different, it's a different game for, for those of us who have been around for a while. I will say this, like, I, I do take uh, exception when people are like, oh, it's too opinionated of a framework. Like, that's what frameworks are supposed to be. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, do a, I do a lot in Laravel. I'm doing a lot right now in React, just playing. Like, both frameworks, both extremely opinionated. And you get, you get what you get. You, and of course, in both cases, you can work, you know, PHP or JavaScript, but fine. But if you would like to play in their playground, like, here, here are the boundaries. And when you go beyond that, don't expect things to work like you expect them to. Because... Yeah. They only built it so far. So um, to that end, I will say that I think having an extremely opinionated framework that is a good place to start is is super helpful for the industry at large. Um, you know, I I've, on the flip side, I've been in conversations um, both at work and then also doing some 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 consulting with a, an old strategist um, I used to work with on a project he's working on, uh, and it you know it's like several times the conversation has been. Um, this is what we want to do. This company knows WordPress, but because that where we want to stay, given where mm. things are going, you know, I mean, the, the training, the training um, mountain, they need to get up and down to, to transition, you know, first to the block editor. I mean, they're, you know, they, yeah. they dabble in the block editor with some editors, but by and large, almost all content is custom post types that people know how to, you know, work right. with in the parameters they have. So to get there, cool. But then beyond that, to think about this concept of like, even even greatly constrained full site editing, you know, um, I don't know if that workflow works at, at the enterprise level where you need to be able to pass things through a, a potential marketing department or whatever, you know. I mean, it, it's it in my experience when I've seen uh, enterprise level companies using WordPress and the block editor, it's like it's an all or nothing. You need to like, you need they need to be all in, and they need to be able to make the kind of financial investment in the software development in order to build the tools that will be most uh, assistive to their workflow. Um, because what you get out of the box is probably not going to be the thing. And that's, that's, that's been my big hang up on the block editor uh, is that this is great, but like, if you are anyone who is larger than like, or smaller than like a fortune 500 company, you're probably not going to, you're not going to have the access to the like customizable sort of tools that you would like that are possible with the block editor, because you aren't going to find it like somebody probably didn't build it. I mean, maybe eventually at some point, like the, you know, like we're still early days, uh, but um, then, then you're out in like the plugin marketplace trying to find just the right fit, um, which is a pain. Um, but like all the things that it adds are like the ability to make these super highly customized uh, ways of inter interacting with your content and, and adding things to it, which is awesome, but not awesome if you don't have the money to build that thing and or the knowledge and expertise to build a thing. I'm certainly not going to build it for my own site. I'm going to use whatever yeah. I can get. And like, um, you know, uh, like I've seen really cool stuff and they took, I also know how long those things took to build, you know? We'll say this too, like one of the tenets for WordPress has always been don't break back compat. Um, and it's, it, it's happening all over the place right now, which is yeah. Fun. Yeah, um, and fun. and maybe not so much in core, but certainly in like core adjacent things like WooCommerce yeah. is just like, oh, oh yeah, yeah for that, sure. that 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 
filter no longer works and it wasn't deprecated. So if you update, it's just not there. Well, or and it's, it's, there, it's, it's happening all over the place anymore. with, uh, yeah. with the uh, PHP support too. Like with uh, supporting PHP eight, like just a lot of, a lot of plugins and, and things don't support Oh, that's it. interesting too. Yeah. I didn't think about the PHP side, but yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's absolutely true. Um, the P and so PHP eight is funny. Cause I feel like PHP eight is, is deprecating stuff that, that was like noted back in five, six. Welcome you know? to our tech podcast. Gosh, apparently I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> Wait, mean to take side it. Side note, Danette, I updated your website. Everything's fine. You don't need to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the viewer really cares about. But, <laughs> I made my heart grow three sizes. I love that. Um, <laughs> I, I was going to say that, that, I mean, the stuff on PHP 8, like, it, it kind of shows, like, um, the, the problematic, like, life cycle, you know? I mean, if you're, if you're pushing dramatic changes, things break. And, I mean, that's, that's totally fair. PHP 8 breakage. I'm also, like, super stoked on 8.1. Yep. And, you know, I, I mean, we're still running 7.4 and all our WordPress stuff, and I don't see us going to 8 anytime soon. But uh, in the rest of the world, like, 8 is, you know, yeah, rusty. I was so. just looking at my at my site, and I'm running seven four still, and I need to. That's that's on my list of things to do. I should probably update. And to that end, is that automatic? Of course, the company behind WordPress. If you've read anything online, um, is a <laughs> um, huge supporter of the PHP Foundation. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I say huge, like, and there's only a few companies that that yeah. are that are right. in putting money behind it. Uh, and truthfully, like when you think of like PHP, like what, you know, I can't name more than like 10 companies that, you know, would make sense to put money behind it. I mean, yep. all the web hosts should be, every web host ought to be. I agree. You all have had a free ride for so long. <laughs> all you web hosts that are listening. Yes, all of them. Uh, so uh, what does our topic mean, Psychopomp? Psychopomp. Thank you, Chris. Um, it is from Greek and it means guide of souls literally oh so it's basically any creature or angel or deity or whatever that escorts newly deceased souls from a to b from earth to the afterlife from wow whatever. so there's i mean depending on the culture there's obviously different psychopomps um but well, this is going to be a big hole <laughs> <laughs> it is it, trust me it is because also it's like it could be animals it could be actual yeah. like humans that could be yeah so do they get time off and what do they do on their time off when they're not escorting people that's the graphic novel that i'm waiting for um like i want to hang with those folks i also want to see the break room i want to see i want to see a lot of things <laughs> it's like it's got like an old like cigarette machine there and they're just hanging out and like you know <laughs> hanging out at the water cooler you know yeah um yeah. but wow. yeah there's there's obviously a lot of different ones based on based on what culture you're reading myths from but um yeah that's superb yeah also, we're also now like in like in christianity it's like peter's kind of a psychopomp because he allows you through the gates and like um hermes and greek mythology could be considered a psychopomp um e egypt i don't remember the name of the yeah guy. but the, you're on you're on the you're on the boat uh, going across the Nile before meeting with uh, Osiris and having your um, your heart weighed against a feather. Yeah, to judge yeah. You. So it's not the person who does the judging; it's the person who does yeah, like, the person that navigates like, across the waters. Look, I'm just driving waters. the bus. Like, yeah, don't. <laughs> yeah. The, the Uber driver. Yeah, yeah we're exactly. off to today. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm about There's to only find one out. place, dude. We only. We, it's more like a bus <laughs> yeah. driver. Like, I'm so only at one stop. You tip, it's not going to change anything for you. <laughs> Uh, how did you come across the concept of psychopomp? Um, this is, it's integrated with all the leaning into my 12th house that I'm doing as far as hospice volunteer and death doula classes. So, yep. So you know, just a little lighthearted 2022. So it's, it's in, was it's part of like stuff that you've been reading or like, are you a psychopomp in some sense? <laughs> um, I, I think a lot of people like end of life doulas are part of that process because they're kind of guiding you from one place yeah. to another and like having that release of energy. Um, so I think a lot of people do consider them to be, um, but yeah, it's been in readings and in my classes referenced. So interesting. Yeah. 
lots of zoom calls <laughs> oh boy i was in zoom I love... six hours on friday so whoa lots of centering wonder... lots of well and part of that was your was your thing your tarot thing right oh yeah yeah oh that was also that was an additional hour and a half yeah so i guess like oh, so that was more it's six yeah. hours plus that <laughs> yeah Jeez. you know hey, you needed a really, weekend really into zoom right now <laughs> like like you know, like the introvert that you are, seven and a half hours on Zoom, it's like a, a typical day. And I was just... And that's your day off. I know. And I was devastated for the rest of the weekend. I was yeah. just like, so yeah. staring at a wall, just being like, can't, can't. But it's fun. It's like more interesting when it's stuff you're interested in, right? So... Um. We, we had our third week in a row where we were like threatening snow um, this past weekend. And I was, well, the- Go away, you snow. <laughs> I know, I was just we like- don't, right. We're like right in the cusp, like where it, it, like, it could happen, like, it, or maybe like not at all for an entire winter, you know? So last year, kids didn't get me this year, happened twice. And so Friday night, I'm like, dang, I'm not sure I have the energy on Saturday to go out and play in the snow again. Like it's exhausting. And uh Maybe fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which side you're on, we got like just a dusting, like enough to make everything like whitish. And then it was sunny. And now I'm sitting outside and it's, I don't know, it's probably 50 some odd degrees, but it is a, uh, wow. I went this out in the snow over the weekend. Sorry, what'd you say, Allison? Oh, I said, but no shoveling. Yeah, that's the best part. That's if you can, if you can get snow, but not have to shovel, that's. Oh, I've never shoveled show, snow, but. Snubbled, Snubbled nope. show? Nope, that's not it. So <laughs> close. Snubbled show. I've never done that in my life, and I hope to keep that that record going on. I mean, like, if it's happening. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binary jazz special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music you can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on twitter and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of binary jazz